Hey, I'm Brandon Scroggins, and I am delighted to introduce to you this segment where we look at our hymn, creed, and verse of the month each month of the year. We're coming into the month of August, and I am so excited that we will be learning what for us is a brand new hymn. It's a hymn that is really a chant. It's a congregational marching forth, proclaiming the Lordship of Christ. This particular hymn goes back to 1982, Twyla Paris, a relatively newer hymn that really took off through the life of the church. And you can almost, as you read the hymn, feel the loss of words as one is reviewing all of the different names for who God is to describe who we are following and glorifying as our one true God. Well, without further ado, the name of this hymn is We Will Glorify. I want to read the words for you as we thoughtfully sing this month. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of hosts, who is the great I Am. So many mighty names to describe our one true God. And we just see a dress rehearsal, a summary of just a few. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise in him we give. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords who is the great I Am. He revealed himself as Yahweh. That's his name. He is the great I Am. He is the self-existent God with no origin. He exists in and of himself and is completely self-sufficient. The aseity of God. He's the King of Kings, high and holy over all things, sovereign over all of creation. But he's also the Lamb of God who laid down his life on behalf of guilty sinners like you and me. And so we are marching forward together in this victory chant as we battle forth with the spoils of war and we declare that our King is the King of Kings and he is the Lamb of God and we will follow him wherever he leads. What a wonderful new hymn written just in the last several decades. We will glorify. Let that be our declaration. Let that be our resolution. Let that be our confession. And so this is what we'll sing. As we do, we are going to be confessing a creed. Now, a creed simply refers to a simple summary of the Christian faith even throughout the pages of the New Testament, but continuing after the closing of the canon of Scripture, the church would often define its doctrine based on error that was creeping into the life of the church. And then the church was then compelled to respond to that error by confessing what they believe about whatever doctrine was under attack. Well, the creed that we're going to be confessing this month is one of the most important and central of all of the historic creeds, the Creed of Chalcedon. The Creed of Chalcedon from 451 A.D. Ligonier Ministries unfolds the story and all of the things that were in stake really well. They say that for the past 1,500 years, right up to our present day, virtually all Christian theologians have defined their orthodoxy or their right sense of what's true true doctrine and belief with reference to the Council of Chalcedon. Now, uh, what was Chalcedon all about, you ask? What, what happened there? It came in the aftermath of the Arian controversy that was settled at the Council of Nicaea. And at Chalcedon, what we see happening is they're just getting off of this Arian controversy where the deity of Jesus Christ was at stake. And the church has come together to affirm that Jesus Christ was not the first and greatest of all of God's creation. Jesus Christ is God and he is the creator and he is one person and he has a fully, truly 
divine nature. But theologians had struggled uh, against Arianism, and they affirmed that deity of Christ, but this would only lead to further controversy. There was then to be explained the relationship between the divine nature of Christ and the human nature of Christ. One person, but two natures. But there were two tendencies, and one tendency came out of the church in Antioch. Their desire was to protect the full reality of Christ's deity and humanity. And, and what began to happen uh, in many circles is they begin to keep those two uh, deity and humanity natures as far apart as possible. They were very careful not to blend the two natures of Christ and so end up diluting both of them. They desired that Christ's human limitations uh, would uh, get applied to his deity in, case, in which case would they believe make him less than fully God or that his divine attributes would get applied to his humanity which would make him less than fully human. And so sometimes they would separate the two natures of Christ almost to the point of making Jesus into two different persons. The chief thinker, false preacher of this line that developed was a man by the name of Nestorius. And he would become the patriarch or the chief bishop of Constantinople. And this would be condemned by the council of Ephesus in 431. Uh, the other tendency, on the other hand, came out of the church of Alexandria. And their desire was to protect the divine person of the Son and His unity as one. But being so zealous to protect the divine nature of Christ, it would easily begin to occur that they would lose sight some of His humanity and threaten the sovereignty of His single personhood. One of the chief champions of uh, this camp, one who would be condemned, is the infamous Eutyches, who would teach that in the car incarnation, Christ's humanity would be swallowed up in his divinity, his Godhead, like, quote, a drop of wine in the sea. Well, uh, that viewpoint would triumph uh, and then another council would later be called to really settle this issue. And that was the Council of Chalcedon in 451. And we're going to read through this, but what was decided, what the church understood the scriptures to teach in the face of both of these errors was that Jesus Christ is one person with two natures. He is fully God are truly God, and He is truly man. He must be truly man in order to come as a man to die for men in the incarnation. But only God can satisfy the wrath of God and save sinners, and so He must also indeed be truly God. And so we have early councils in the church. We have uh, the Nicene Council to establish the deity of Christ. We have the Council of Chalcedon to uphold his deity and his humanity in two separate persons. We have other councils, and these are very, very important as the church has worked these things out. Just as we sing in the famous hymn, Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hell the incarnate deity, pleased as man with, me, uh, with, pleased as man, with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Well, the Creed of Chalcedon reads this way. We then, following the Holy Fathers, all with one consent, teach men to confess one and the same Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the same perfect in Godhead and also perfect in manhood, truly God and truly man, of a reasonable soul and body, consubstantial with the Father, meaning of the same substance and essence, according to the Godhead and consubstantial consubstantial with us according to the manhood. So he's truly God and truly man. And all things like unto us without sin, begotten before all ages of the Father according to the Godhead. And in these latter days for us and for our salvation, born of the Virgin Mary, the mother of God. So Jesus Christ being God in the flesh 
with a fully human and fully divine nature, something Nestorius would have never stood for. According to the manhood, one and the same Christ, Son, Lord, only begotten, to be acknowledged in two natures, inconfusedly, unchangeably, indivisibly, inseparably, the distinction of natures being by no means taken away by the union, but rather the property of each nature being preserved and concurring in one person and one subsistence, not parted or divided into two persons, but one and the same Son and only begotten, God the Word, the Lord Jesus Christ, as the prophets from the beginning have declared concerning Him, and the Lord Jesus Christ Himself has taught us, and the creed of the Holy Fathers has handed down to us. So we have one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then we have God the Son, Jesus Christ, one person in two natures, truly God, truly man. Every word of this creed aimed at the heart of heretics and upholding true and sound doctrine that would be the foundation of our eternal salvation. Praise God, they stood firm and they declared faithfully. Our verse for the month is Philippians 4a. Philippians 4a is a verse that every single Christian, without exception, must memorize as quickly as possible. The Christian life is a battle for the mind. And unlike Eastern mysticism and many other religions, we don't so much believe that it is the emptying of the mind through which we do what God has required of us, what we need. What we believe is it's not the emptying of the mind, but rather the filling of the mind with the truth of God, with beauty, with truth, taking every thought captive and submitting it to Jesus Christ. What ought we to fill our minds with? Philippians 4.8 could truly be a life-changing verse for you to memorize and meditate on. And so we're going to memorize it, and here it is. Finally, brothers... Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Can you imagine some of you may want to get that verse, print it out, put it over the doorframe of your home. Let this be your family verse. Let this be what we pursue to fill our minds with truth, beauty, and goodness. And may God make it overflow from our lives. So we will together do this this month. And I'm so excited, and I pray that you will in your family worship, to sing, We Will Glorify, to read through the Creed of Chalcedon. And we'll have copies of this available in our church so you can take it home and read through it. And then to memorize Philippians 4.8, our August hymn, Creed, and Verse of the Month. God bless you.